Good evening, everybody. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Carlos Valdez. And I have been uh, serving you for about 33 years in this community. But in running this campaign, I've become aware that there's a lot of people, especially the younger voters, who have no idea who I am or where I come from in spite of my 33 years of service. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Carlos Valdez. I was born and raised here in Corpus Christi in the Molina neighborhood. I was one of 14 children uh, and was raised under very difficult circumstances. In fact, the circumstances were so difficult, there is absolutely no way that I could be in this position that I am now. But through the grace of God, through the guidance of a lot of good people, and with the help of many of you out there, I have uh, been able to uh, earn an Associate of Arts degree from Del Mar College, a Bachelor of Arts degree from Texas A&I University, a Juris Doctor degree from the University of Oklahoma, and I've served you as an Assistant County Attorney as your county attorney for eight years, as a district attorney for 17 years, and as a city attorney for three and a half years. During that time, I have made some very, very difficult decisions involving some serious, serious um, issues in this community. I really appreciate the support that you have given me in the past, even through some of these very difficult times I would appreciate your support in the future. My name is Carlos Valdez. I want to be your judge of the county court at law number four. Thank you. And now, Mr. Warner. My name is Mark Warner. I arrived in this beautiful community in December of 1983 when I was stationed here as a judge advocate with the United States Navy. I don't know how many people remember but I think it was about seven degrees out or something when I arrived here and I thought, South Texas is supposed to be a lot warmer. But be that as it may, I stayed here, finished my tour of active duty. Eventually I opened up my private practice of law in 1985. And I had a great deal of experience in all kinds of cases. I uh, handled all kinds of civil litigation, handled probate, family law matters, but as time went by, I became more and more specialized in criminal law. And in 1989, I was board certified in criminal law. I continued my practice, again, sort of gradually focusing on the criminal cases until 1991 during Operation Desert Storm, and I was asked to return to active duty, where I served for another six months. And then once again, reopened my law practice and basically uh, focused on criminal cases and kind of lost my civil practice along the way. Now, I do have experience in all areas of the law. I think I can bring a well-balanced perspective to County Court of Law number four, and I think I can serve this community effectively in that position. Thank you both. Um, the, this first question is for um, both of you. Um, and we'll start with the, uh, Mr. Warner. What are the responsibilities of a county court at law judge and how can you make a difference? Well, the main responsibility is to be a fair and effective judge in bringing justice to the community. That means not only having criminal cases heard in a timely manner, but making sure that civil litigants can get their cases heard. One of the great difficulties we have in all the courts in Oasis County is the fact that there's quite a backlog. We don't really have the resources to provide more judges and more courts. And I think the thing that I can do is to try to run county court at law in the most efficient manner possible 
where we get the job done and there is in fact justice for all. Thank you. I think, thank you. I think the most important um, duty of a county courted law judge, the most important job that a county courted law judge does is to decide cases. I know that sounds simple, but that's really what a judge does. When the community is, is working together, doing all these things together, issues will arise that uh, involve serious questions that are very difficult for the community to, to, to uh, decide. So that's what courts do, is decide in cases where people, or ordinary people, can't, can't decide. You have one side wanting one thing, another side wanting another thing, and there's this clash of ideas, and you can't really resolve it. You go to the judge to have a judge make decisions. I have been making those decisions for the last 33 years. I have this experience. I am not afraid to work hard. I do it. I'm not afraid to make decisions. I do it. I know that eventually those cases will result, uh, will end up in the Court of Appeals. I want to make the right decision and save you money. Thank you, Mr. Valdez. You. The, next, the next question uh, is also for both of you. Do you think that you have no choice under the law to honor a venue agreed to under contract that allows a case to be tried in another county or another state even if the events took place in Nueces County? That's a pretty technical question. You want to handle it first, or you want to say something in Latin? This is pretty. In <laughs> no, I, think, um, I think I'll let you, Mr. Valdez. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what we're talking about here is adherence to the law, and that's very, very important. What you need in a judge, especially at this level, at the county court level, is somebody who's going to read the law and apply it as it is. What you don't want is somebody who will be legislating from the bench. You don't want somebody who's going to be trying to make up law at the county court level. You don't want that. What you want is somebody who takes the law, takes the contract that, that we're talking about, uh, puts the law to the contract, addresses the issues, addressing both of them, and render a decision. You don't want somebody making up law or, or legislating from the bench. And I tell you, I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. Mr. Warner. I would agree with that, basically. If there is, in fact, some sort of a contractual agreement for venue in another location, even though the events occurred here in Nueces County, if the law allows that, I have to follow that. Uh, again, like Mr. Valdez, I agree that judges cannot legislate from the bench. We may disagree with something that may be required by the law, but we don't have the freedom to act on our own personal impulses. Thank you. The next question is for uh, both of you, and that is, how will you process a case when you don't receive complete case paperwork in front of you? And I'll start with Mr. Warner. How do you process it if you don't have the complete paperwork? Yes, sir, that's the question. Okay, well, if I open up a file on my bench and it does not have the requisite paperwork, I'm going to send it back and say, get me the rest of the paperwork. All right, Mr. Valdez. And I agree with uh, Mr. Warner. A, a, a good judge, a good judge would never, ever, ever decide a case based on insufficient uh, information based on insufficient evidence. You don't do that. You wait until you get everything before you be before you make a decision. I know it's easy for some people to say, well, I can decide this, I can decide that without looking at anything. A good judge won't do that. And that's part of being a, uh, having the demeanor of a good judge. You can't just wait for one side or, or b base a decision on what one side gives you. You've got to wait for the other side and, and get it, all the information in front of you before you can decide something. So I agree with Mr. Warner on that. Thank you. I'm getting more questions here. <laughs> um, I'll start with this one. It's, it's the easiest one. <laughs> Uh, it's for both of you, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Valdez. If elected, will you complete your term? Um, <laughs> I, if, um, 
if God allows me to, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, one, one of the things I do um, is tell people that I would like to serve them in this position. And what I mean, what I mean by that is serve them until the, the, uh, the end of the, of the uh, term. Now, I don't know if there's anybody in the audience who can tell me what's going to happen in two years or three years. I can't. So I will tell you, I will try to serve the four years, but if something happens in three years that requires my attention, requires my, me to do something else, I may have to do that. Um, whoever wrote this question probably knows something about may happen something in the future. I don't know. I intend to serve you for four years, and that's what I want to do. So yes. Thank you. Mr. Warner? Well, I don't think uh, Carlos or I can be described as spring chicken, so uh, we're both 60 years old. Hopefully we'll live long enough to serve out at least one term. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I can honestly say that when I was in the Navy, I served many times as a summary court-martial judge. I enjoyed it. I've always thought that Given the right opportunity, I'd like to be a judge, and frankly, following in the footsteps of Judge Klager would probably be my greatest life's ambition. Uh, I'm definitely going to serve as a county court at law judge uh, until, frankly, I'm too old to do the job anymore. I have no ambition to move on to any other offices whatsoever. So that's my plan. Thank you. <laughs> and um, this will be your last question, and it's for both of you. Since the county court at law has original jurisdiction in probate cases, what is your experience in probate in the last five years? And we'll start with Mr. Warner. I suspect we're going to have similar answers, which amounts to not a whole lot of experience in the last five years. It's probably been about 15 years since I practiced probate law. One of the things I've done to prepare for hopefully my next job is to go to court when Judge Klager was handling probate cases. I intend to continue to do that and gain more expertise in that area uh, prior to hopefully assuming office on January the 1st. In the last how many years? Five years? Yes. Uh, very little. My only involvement in probate cases the last five years has been as a city attorney. And, and that's on the periphery, just peripheral in, involvement in cases involving um, unpaid city fines, unpaid taxes that require uh, some appearance in probate court against an estate or something like that, but it's very limited. Now, I did do some probate when I was in, in private practice, but I don't want to tell you how long ago that was because then I'll tell you how old I am. So, <laughs> And Mr. Warner has already done a good job of that. So. <laughs> All right, now it's time for uh, closing statements, and uh, we'll begin this time with Mr. Valdez. Um, I want to do something unusual. I want to thank my opponent, uh, Mark Warner, for keeping our dialogue on the high road in the case. We're running for, for an office that's very serious. We should not lower uh, our dialogue, our political dialogue, to to something that's bad, that's um, base. We should try to keep uphold the uh, ideals of what position we're running for. So I want to thank him publicly for uh, keeping our dialogue on the high road. Uh, I also want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here tonight. Uh, I know this is very exciting for you. I can tell by all the yawns in the audience. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. This is Democracy in Action. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carlos Valdez. I have served you for 34 years. Uh, I, I want to continue to serve uh, you in this position of County Court at Law Number 4. I appreciate your support in the past. I appreciate your support now, and I ask for your support in this election. God bless you. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Warner. To follow what Mr. Valdez has said, Carlos and I have, in fact, been opponents in cases on many occasions. And we've always kept that on a professional basis and have always been friends and gotten along just fine, which is why I think our campaign hasn't gone into any negative directions. And that's not the kind of campaign I like. That's not the kind of campaign Mr. Valdez likes. And we're going to keep it on a positive basis for the rest of it, uh, in my belief. I just ask you to consider my service uh, 
I've served our country in the United States Navy. I've served our community as a Rotarian and on the uh, board of directors. I'm presently president-elect of the Corpus Christi Bar Association. And I think I'm the person to serve the community as judge of county court at law number four. Thank you. Thank you both for being here tonight. We appreciate it.